Hi, this is my video for investments chapter two going over some of the quantitative elements of chapter two in a spreadsheet so the first uh tab we're going to work on is ipo so i'm going to go ahead i'm just going to color this tab and then we're going to follow up and we're going to work on short sell and then finally we'll look at how to calculate some of the margin returns okay and I'm just coloring the tab I don't want to color the sale okay so let's look at the problem here the on April 13th 2017 uh, Yext Inc completed an IPO on the NASDAQ a New York Stock Exchange uh, next sold 1 million, 10 million 500,000 shares of stock at offering price of $11 per share. So problem A, calculate the gross proceeds of the IPO. So let me just show how you, these, these are calculated. So offer price per share is $11, just pull, pulled from here. And then the number of sh shares issued is at 10,000, 10 million 500, so it's pulled here. So to calculate the gross proceeds is simply going to be the eleven dollars times the the ten million shares. So they're going to pull in one hundred and fifteen million five hundred thousand dollars from this IPO. So next is the calculate the IPO underpricing. So the stock op, uh, was offered the IPO is offered at eleven, but the market price per share at the open for people to trade in the secondary market it jumped to thirteen dollars and forty one cents. So we're going to calculate the over or under pricing here. In this case, it was underpriced because it came out below then. So, so to calculate that percentage, I'm going to take bracket the ending price minus the beginning price divided by the beginning price. So this would be the formula here, and we get that 21%. Now, finally, calculate the dollar amount of underwriting. So the underwriting discount per share was $2.41. So how did I get this $2.41 for the underpriced, the underwriting discount per share? I'm going to, that's simply the $13, the market price, minus this, the IPO offering, and that's how you get the $2.41. The amount of shares outstanding is, of course, from up here. <clears throat> So by multiplying the 241 times the, other, the shares outstanding, we get the dollar amount of the underwriting discount. Now, when IPOs are initially priced and offered for sale, the, it's quite common for the stock to jump up the first day of trading in the secondary market. So this is what we're calculating. Okay, so let's move on to short sell. Okay, so there is this a little bit bigger. So the short sell, we're going to be looking at you sell a stock short at $20 a share, you repurchase it at 18. Okay, so this is good because we want to sell high and buy back low. So to calculate the profit in the short sell, we take our the price we sold at minus the price we purchased at and then we're going to multiply that by 100 because there's 100 shares of stock here. Now, I need to put parentheses around this. Okay, so this would be a $200 profit. Now, if I took a long position at 20 and then I sold at 18, the formula is the sort of the inverse where I take the 18 minus the 20 and then multiply by 100. So you see that if I take a short position at 20 and then repurchase at 18, I make a $200 profit. If I take a long position at, tw at 20 and then sell at 18, I take a $200 loss. So you can, I'll let you calculate the rest of these on here. I'll do the second box, which is similar to the first box, but the first box is showing you the the short sell and the long sell at the exact identical uh, purchase and sales. 
Here we have, it's a little bit more mixed. So here we have the first position is a short position. So when you do a short position, I want to take, I sold it short at this amount. And then I repurchased at 43. So right away I, I can tell this is a loss because I sold short and the, the stock price went up. So that's going to be a loss. However, on this long position here, if I take my purchase price, so I, I took a long position at 30 and then I sold at 25. I did it backwards. Um, for long, I need to take the sell price first. Parentheses, sell price minus purchase price times 100 shares, because that's the amount of shares for this lot. And that's a $500 loss. So it makes sense, because if I bought something, it took a long position at 30, price went down to 25, I have 100 shares, I lost $500. Okay, you could fill in the rest of these, it's more of the same. Okay, let's look at different, a different way of laying it out, something similar, more similar to the textbook. So suppose Tesla stock is currently trading at 270 per share. Calculate each of the following situations, ignoring brokerage commissions. Calculate the gain or loss. We're missing the the end part of that. Excuse me while I fix this. Okay. So calculating the gain or loss that Olivia realizes if she makes a hundred share transaction. Okay. So these are the five situations. So let's look at the first one is she sells this, this, she sells short and repurchases and then borrows shares at 295. Okay. So here's how we calculate this. So the market price per share, that 270, where is that coming from? It's coming from up here. So 270 comes from above. 100 shares, the number of shares sold short comes from above again. So we get that 100. Okay. So now how do we calculate this proceeds? It's simply the 270 times the 100. So we sold, we sold the stock short. So when you sell something, you get proceeds. Now, when we later sell um, short sell cover, we're going to, we, we're going to uh, cover that short sell. The market price um, went up to 295 per share, still the same hundred shares. So the cost um, to the investor buying this is going to be the 295 times the 100. So then the gain or loss on this position, since we sold short at 270 and we repurchased at 295, we're taking a loss, which is just the difference of these two. So when we sell short at 270, we're hoping for the price to continue to go down, but the price went up. So we wound up, sorry, that's the formula. We wound up having a loss of 2.5 thousand. Because when you initiate a short sale, you're hoping that when you cover, the price is going to be lower. And here the price is higher, so we have a loss on that. Now if we go to B, she takes a long position and sells the stock at 295. So a long position is going to be the inverse. So you see how this is set up the same way. She's going to buy the stock at 27, which is the cost to the investor. And then when she sells, the proceeds are going to be 29. So in a long position, she's making 2,500 because you buy low and you sell high is what you want. So this is if she took a long position. So part C, 
She sells short and repurchases at two fifty five a share. Okay, so again, she's going to initiate a two seventy for one hundred. So their proceeds, uh, because it's a sale, is going to be twenty seven thousand. Then when she repurchases it, now it's at uh, two fifty five a share times one hundred shares is twenty five fifty. So her her gain is going to be her proceeds minus her costs. So she gets that fifteen hundred dollar gain because the stock price. Did what you want to do when you short sell, it went down. Now, if we look at this from the long position, the the market price you're going to initiate and have a cost of $27,000 to buy into the position. The stock price went down. So when you sell, you're getting, you're taking a loss of 1500, which is the inverse. So just two different ways to look at how you can calculate the short sell here. Now let's move over to margin. <clears throat> Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the formula for calculating margin percentage. Remember, margin is your equity in the position or your cash in the position. So we assume an investor buys 100 shares of stock at $50 per share, putting up a 60% margin. So the market value is going to be the 100 shares times the $50 per share. So this is the market value. Now the debit balance, what is the debit balance of the transaction? This is going to be 40%. 60% is, is margin or equity. 40% will have to be debt. How I would calculate this is I would say my initial position, my market value position, times parenthesis 1 minus the initial margin. Here is 60%. So my debit balance is going to be <clears throat> 2000 Now my equity or my margin says how much equity capital must an investor provide to make this margin transaction. You can calculate this two ways. One, you could say um, I'm going to take my 5000 multiply it by my 0.60 because 60% is my margin. And that would give me 3000 or you could just say my market value minus my debit balance gives me my equity. So either way is correct. Now, if the stock price rises to $60 per share, what is the investor's new margin position? Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I would say I would follow this formula here. So the value of the securities is going to be whatever the current stock price is, is the current value of security. So it's going to be $60 per share minus the dollars loaned, which is right here. That doesn't change, divided by the value of securities. So let me start out the formula. I'm going to say the value of securities, which is going to be $60 times 100 shares, or 6,000, minus the dollars loaned, which is the 2000 here. And I'm going to divide that by the value of the securities, which is 6000. So value securities here, value securities here, these are the same. So they wouldn't be different numbers. And then this gives me a margin, a new margin percentage of 67%, which makes sense. So if I started out 6%, 60%, the stock price went from $50 per share to $60 per share, then I would expect a 67% margin. Put a dollar sign here. Okay. So you can repeat that on these other two here. I'm going to move lower. Now, margin call price. How to calculate a margin call price. This is saying at what price does the stock have to fall to that the, the broker will call you and say you need to add more money to your account. So here's the formula here to calculate a margin call price. And here's the information for this first example. I have $100, you know, I purchased 100 shares at $40 per share using an initial margin of 40%. The maintenance margin is 25%. Assume you have no other securities in your account. What, uh, what price per share will you be expected to receive a margin call? Okay, so I'm gonna say, first I have to calculate what is the amount borrowed? divided by the number of shares, one minus the maintenance. Okay, so let's calculate the amount of money that would be borrowed for this position first. I'm gonna put that up here and we'll call this, 
again, we'll just bring this down here. Just want to keep a good format here. Okay, so to calculate this again, I would say what we did earlier, which is going to be the $40 per share Um, times one minus the margin, initial margin, and I'm gonna multiply this by 100 because it's 100 shares. Okay, so the dollars, the debit balance in this count is so the total position we know is going to be the 40 times 100, which is 4,000. But of that 4,000, 40 60 percent is borrowed. So that is the debit balance. So this makes it a little bit easier when I calculate the margin call price. I can say the amount borrowed divided by the number of shares, which are 100, multiplied by one minus the margin maintenance, which is 25% here. So I wanna make sure I have my parentheses. So this would be the formula So it's giving me an autocorrect here. Oh, it's putting this multiplication symbol in here. Yeah, you can't um, you can't assume. This makes it a little bit bigger. So in this in this situation here, um, you have to have this multiplication sign between. Okay. So if we're gonna do the the next example down here. Again, I want to calculate what is the uh, dollars loaned here. And that's going to be the $63 per share times one minus the margin percentage of 0.55. Times 100. So this is the amount of money that I borrowed on this position. 55% uh, of this position is equity, 45% is borrowed. So you need to calculate the debit balance first. And then when I calculate the margin call price using this formula, you can start with the amount borrowed divided by the number of shares multiplied by one minus the margin maintenance, which is 30% here, and put two parentheses, and I get a share price. Now let's put this in the currency format. Okay, now down here, when you calculate this last one, remember there's 300 shares. So when you're using this formula up here, it's the number of shares won't be 100. In this case, it'll be 300. So I'll let you calculate that. I'll put a little star up here in the formula so we know we need to put that multiplication position in. Okay. All right. So that is the basics of how to solve these quantitative problems from chapter two. I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to talking to you again soon.